Well, so first things first, LOL at Nike. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it. A very interesting story has developed over the last few weeks, also over the last few days, which has kind of got the whole sneaker community aghast, aghast, right? Again, not that big of an issue. I think um, there are occasions in life where sometimes an apology is warranted, but there are also occasions in life where you start to wonder, Again, just because I have knowledge of the inside, having been inside these buildings, having seen how they kind of act and go on, it's just interesting to see how these things happen. It just makes me laugh and chuckle on the inside. So, this story is from NPR. It's been all over the, the social media anyway. And it's concerning one Nike. Nike uh, decided to pull a shoe from featuring, because it featured a Betty DeVos flag over concerns about racist symbolism, right? So, it's so a Nike and Max are meant to come out um, soon. I think for Black History Month, I'm assuming so. And they had um, this flag on the back of the hill that supposedly is uh, has been co-opted by um, white supremacists, right? Um, supposedly, um, Colin Kaepernick was the one that kind of put in a call to Nike for him to pull it. But let's read the story and I can laugh as we go along. <laughs> um, here it is. Ba, ba, ba. Nike has recorded a shoe featuring Betty, uh, Betsy, the, Betsy Ross flag over concerns that the design glorifies slavery and racism. The red and white blue sneaker have been set to hit the US markets commemorate July 4th holiday. Oh, shit, okay, it's a 4th of July shoe. Nike has chosen not to release the Nike Air 1 Quick Strike 4th of July as it features an old version of an American flag, the company told NPR on Tuesday. Nike did not immediately respond to questions about the thinking behind the original design. It released a statement saying, We're regularly, We regularly make business decisions to withdraw initiatives, products, and services. Nike made a decision to halt distribution of the shoe based on concerns that it could unintentionally offend and distract from the uh, nation's patriotic colleagues. The special Air Max One design, which includes an embroidery of a famous flag featuring the 13 stars and original 13 colonies, <laughs> true complaints that it celebrates <laughs> uh, an era of US history when slavery was legal and commonplace. While the flag's defenders say it has a place in history, critics say it has become a symbol of extreme views. It's, it's, it's funny that they would have a flag of slavery on the back of Air Max Ones, right? That are essentially, you know on the back of a shoe that gets reissued a million times, on the back of a quick strike release that is tied and drawn out, on the back of this um this fucking drive to rinse all the money out of sneakerheads without listening to anything they say, you would call that modern slavery in some way, shape or form. I'm sure there's a good Kanye West song that we can overlay over this that will kind of make some sense. Um... These, uh, those critical of Nike should include activists and former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick. According to Wall Street Journal, YouTuber says Colin Kaepernick asked Nike to reconsider design out of concern it would send a wrong message about the race, about race in the modern United States. Kaepernick has not commented publicly about the controversy. However, the No Your Rights campaign Find about Kaepernick's retweeted several messages about Nike's decision, including one that used the Twitter hashtag I'm with Cap, echoing the protest that made um, Kaepernick famous. Nike's pre released images of the shoe sparked commentary and debate last week. I wasn't free yet. Read one comment sticking his Instagram. Uh, and I was air slavery. <laughs> Nike's sudden decision to withdraw the shoe drew an even bigger response. It's a good thing Nike only wants to sell sneakers to people who hate America, Ted Cruz said, wrote in response to general. What does that even make? What's Ted Cruz talking about? Ted Cruz is, is opposed to Nike pulling the shoe. Why? Because it's an American flag, right? He doesn't see any. That's a, that's the issue with politics in nowadays, right? There's two extreme reactions. There's the reaction on the left of like burn the shoe, pull it, burn down everything that Nike's ever stand for. Nike is cancelled, right? And then there's a right where it's like there's nothing wrong that you guys are overreacting. There's obviously a middle ground. There's obviously some emotional attachment people have towards or response they have towards that flag. Right? It does uh, maybe um, bring back some memories. And you're also right, uh, people on the right to be like, you know, hey, this is part of our history. We shouldn't tear down, you know, the whole tearing down the statues and all that stuff. I'm not really sure that I'm really with it. I think, again, it's part of our history. It's something that we should be able to confront or just discuss in a adult manner but nowadays we don't really have adult conversations unfortunately they all kind of devoid into kind of like kids squabbling on the playground um but if we could have an adult conversation about it it'd be a much more constructive adult conversation to have maybe they get put in maybe those statues get put in museums or whatever it may be called right um um right or some but tearing them down and shit is a bit strange um because who's to say that some of the statues that we see in um you know uh the roman times that have, have their faces you know smashed off might not have been a protest as well to something they have they might have done during you know 
uh, during those times, right? Imagine somebody was, you know, accused of murdering someone and they happened to have a statue of them. Maybe they, the, a mark of disrespect or a mark that you'd been ostracized by your community was to maybe kind of smash your face off of your statue. That could be, a, that could have been a thing. I'm not, you know, I'm not opposed to that. But again, let's have an interesting conversation about it as opposed to just like, you know, occupying both ends of the fringe. But again, um, the article continues here. By the time they decided to pull the shoes, though, the company had already shipped the sneakers to retailers to meet the July first date. The controversy initially went sent the shoe into collectible territory, where the original suggested price was one forty. The sneaker at one point was selling for two thousand five hundred on clothing site StockX. As the sneaker magazine kept to note, the shoe has been pulled from Nike's new launch site. Nike's about face drew a sharp rebuke from Arizona government uh, Doug Ducey, who announced that his state will no longer offer tax incentives to Nike to try and lure the company to incent. If so I guess they lose now on that, right? We don't stuck up. Okay, the, the, the historic flag base design was codified in 1777 when the Continental Congress adopted a resolution calling for a national flag comprising of 13 stars to 13 stars, white, red, and blue, presenting a new constellation. In recent years, right wing and extremist groups have attempted to adopt a Betsy Ross flag. In 2016, supporters of the then called Donald Trump displayed it alongside Make America Great Again banners at a high school basketball game, football game, leading a Michigan superintendent to apologize to anyone who was offended. Jesus Christ. Um, despite the flag's in name, Betsy Ross' role in design the creating the flag, according to is largely fictionist, explained to the, 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 the. Okay, so we've got a flag here that essentially um, causes a reaction with a, a certain amount of people in the US, um, specifically people um, of an African American heritage who obviously, you know, have natural reservations towards it. Makes complete sense. Nike, in their infinite wisdom, decide that they will put that flag on the back of an Air Max One. On the back of sneakers that are predominantly something worn by, again, um, marginalized people, I guess. People of color have made basically sneaker culture a thing. Um, it's funny, right? For me, it's funny because having worked for Nike in the past in some capacity as an independent contractor, not as an official employee when I used to work at 1948, and having seen how some of the people that work there go on, having seen how hard it was with some of my friends, myself included to get a full-time job working at nike it makes me laugh because again i think the same happens at probably places like apple and stuff right the the more prestigious the brand um the more appeal it has the more it also has um the tendency to employ a few wankers here and there right people who um take their job a little bit too seriously or people who feel as if they are mark parker themselves or if they are tinker hatfield right people that are on the lowest rungs who kind of elevate themselves to a point where they kind of feel as like they have the they have the shot calling privileges which they might do right they might have it might be a culture at nike again i hadn't chance i didn't have a chance to ever work there but there might be a culture at nike where some of the people that are the lower rungs get to dictate who actually comes in through the door right so there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of scarcity in that um concept in that kind of employee workplace right everyone's afraid of letting anyone else in because they know by and large the job that they're doing is bullshit and most people that have an interest in shoes in culture in fashion in the scene in streetwear could do their job with their eyes closed right superbly easily uh, without no hassle so they have to there has to be a level of protecting protecting their space in some regard which i'm respectful for and i don't have any problems with at all it's just interesting and funny to me that in a building or in a place full of so many different people for so many different colors and creeds who are more worried about their job than they are worried about doing the right thing or representing the culture in the right way or doing the best thing in the interest of the people that buy the shoes i.e sneakerheads i.e streetwear people right in the interest of just keeping their job they'll keep their mouth shut and just go along with whatever's happening because you know for sure there was someone in the room that did see that and thought, hey, that's a bit that's a bit dodge, that's a bit questionable, or whatever, but they'll probably explain the it's probably rationalized to them in some sort of clever, it's a bitsy slideshow way, right? They probably was able they were they were trying to maybe take reclaim the flag, take it back, and malarkey. They did whatever they could to kind of make it make sense. But I'm sure it's people in the room that didn't think it was a good idea. But guess what? They carried on doing anyway. And it's funny because these same people that are so stringent with who they let in, they won't hire you because you don't know certain people, you, you didn't suck that person's dick, or you're not friends with that person, or you didn't go to that event. Suddenly, these are the same people who now got themselves into hot water, right? The people that made such a big fuss out of backing Colin Kaepernick, right? Um, for doing what he was doing, where he stood by he, he, you know, his moral compass, whether you agreed it or not agreed it, cost him his livelihood, right? He took a big gamble, and he made such a big deal out of it that now look at them right now they're the same person who they backed and said you know we're going to support you politically 
uh, and sociology and with you know with your social justice issues are now in hot water and this same person is now having to kind of essentially you know um, smack you on the wrist and shit it's just like it's just it, you couldn't make this up you really couldn't make this up it's such a faux pas in the biggest sense of the word again like i said because they've got a huge community of artists designers collaborators around them who are just again for me i'm not bothered i don't give a shit about this sort of stuff i think it can get you know apologized away quite quickly but nowadays with how oversensitive people are with how there are some people out there who are just looking to get offended with the recent thing that happened recently with the air force one um Remember the Ray Force they put out recently about uh, what was that? Was it the American Indian um, sort of like pattern that got pulled from the line again? They already had a misstep, right? That they, they should have maybe, oh, actually, whoa, and that was a misstep that didn't really make any sense to me at the time. But again, people from that American Indian society were very offended by it. Okay, cool. Let's agree with what they say. Let's pull the product. And then they do this again back to back. It's just like some of these brands have absolutely no idea, no clue whatsoever, no clue. But they like to pretend like they do. They like to give the assumption that they know what they're going, they know what they're doing. The people working, they like to pretend as if they are experts of their field, but they're not. So again, it goes back to show that um, for all you sneakers out there who are, you know, again, who um, kiss the ground Nike walk on or other, all these other sneaker brands, just know that there are human beings behind them, just like in anywhere else in the world, right? It's not just this faceless brand. There are humans I work there, and humans are susceptible to making mistakes. They're susceptible to making the wrong decisions, making the wrong calls, or just doing stupid things or protecting their job over doing the right thing for the community or the people that they're quote unquote trying to serve um and these things are always going to happen the best thing that you can do to inoculate yourself from this is not buy into the hype it's a quick strike who gives a shit leave it where it may be but again this hype market that they've created look look at the unintended consequences the shoe is now reselling for i don't know 10 times its value that's that that is what you get right for your nonsense right you play around with the with the reselling market and it's eventually essentially you make a shoe that people deem as racist and is now selling for 10 times its worth you could not make this up really it's just insane the level of stupidity that goes into something like that it's just like especially again especially nowadays for anyone else it wouldn't matter any other era no era it wouldn't matter in world history it would not matter but nowadays to not be cognitively aware of what's going on and to put this out still just makes me laugh and just again for all the people out there that work there that try and go on as if they're billy big bulls you know there you go man there you go where were you when this was meeting was taking place where were you now you're going to be gossiping around the water cooler at work trying to pretend like you always knew this was a bad idea fuck out of here man like people man sometimes employees are the worst bro honestly and again they're the worst because i'd say if you if i'm a manager of at nike i've got a million and one things to do right area manager general manager i'm flying around the world i'm selling shoes i'm balancing budget sheets i've got so much stuff to do i rely on my subordinates right the the people working at mid to lower level right i rely on them to kind of feedback to me hey i'm on i'm on black twitter hey i'm on the internet hey i'm on social media hey i'm plugged in this shoe isn't cool they should be able to say that but those people are the ones that are so worried about their job that they'll deny people like i or people like you or people like anyone else out there who wants to have a job there and do a great work and you know um it has a couple of projects in mind they'll deny you a job by not letting you in or by closing the door and making sure you don't get through but then they will protect their job at all costs and not even speak up when need to be and then guess what happens then who gets the blame the person at the top the person below doesn't get any blame because they can just hide or cower behind a pillar somewhere and pretend as if they weren't in or you know as if that you know they got you know over overran or something it's just it's just insane it's insane it's insane but hey what can you do i'm not surprised um big brands with you know big brands pretending to be plugged in, into culture um stumbling and making cultural mistakes name me a better duo